Can I put off for a second there? Yeah, I just say goodnight to okay. Precious Harley. Joel, I want to test this. Uh, John, did okay, you get the note it. that there was a, a flash sale down at the creeks? Say this again, there was a flash sale down at the creeks? Down at the creeks? Did you get the gift card to Dan Flashes? Oh, with the the um, super complicated patterns on their shirts? Or yeah. Whatever? yeah. Joel, you got to watch the show. I've seen that. You got to get it. I know which one you're talking about. You sure. gotta get that it. one didn't grab me as much as oh, the ghost tour. I was tour. loving that one, yeah. The ghost tour, and then, um, I, I love the hat one too. The hat in the courtroom. I think my favorite. I one, didn't see that one. My favorite one. I still have a couple more to watch. My favorite one is a tie uh, with the hot dog guy from season one, and then also that girl in the office who they get the copier, and they're like, "Oh, it looks like Santa came early." And then she keeps trying to add on to his joke and everyone's just looking at her like she's weird. You get, I don't know if you remember that one. The yeah, hot dog one? season has, has lost on me, but I, okay. I do love when he's interviewing for the job and he's like, okay, I think the door goes both ways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and no it, it definitely goes both ways. No, it was uh, filmed kind of perfect with the hinges, like, like him slowly <laughs> just forcing it open. <laughs> and then he gets it open and he says, See, I knew you know, I knew it. I knew it would. <laughs> I think an underrated one from season two. I'm gonna, grab, the, hey, uh, I'm gonna grab a soda water real quick. I'm gonna grab a beer and a regular water. You're alone, Joe. You better talk. Well, are we on? Do I just talk or do I just go? Ow. It's a lot of pressure just to hum even. Uh, let's let's analyze the rooms that we got here. It's like John has a very white wall with uh, things hung up. Looks like Joel has a nice hearth with... Uh, looks like there's a nose or a butt on one end of it. And some Disney films next to it. Probably Lady and the Tramp, Aladdin, in the big cases. And then some other John artworks on the other end with um, some woodwork. So it looks like a Frankenstein. Looks like a, there's a light that's probably not done by John, but it does have a, a uh, scary mask on the end of it. And uh, John is back. I'm back. Okay. Scary mask? What are we doing? Well, I was trying to talk through what all the things were in you guys' room. So I was talking about jo uh, Joel's. Uh, he's got a hearth. Isn't that creepy? He's got what looks like a big nose on the very right side of it. And then what looks like some Disney classic clamshell films next to it. Am I right? Are those Disney classic clamshells next to that big nose on the hearth? I just hope he knows that all those pillows by that fireplace is a severe fire hazard. I hope he knows this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I worry for the, the livelihood of him and his family. But you've been there. What are what's on top of the the hearthstone? He's got a bunch of vases and oh, you think those are like bubble VHSs? No, that's something yeah, else. Yeah, I thought that was like Tom and Huck that we're looking at, and no, then Pocahontas next to it. No, the scales way off. Scales way off. Well, it's hard to tell where <laughs> he set that scale at. Who knows? Who could know? Are we tuned? That's what I wonder. That's what I want to know. Hey, we've heard worse. Alright. Let's uh, wait for Joel to get back and then we'll start it. Anyone joining us in the stream here, which um, I can see how many viewers we have, and it's a, it's a low did, number. Uh, thanks you, for joining us. already do a you guys already do an RIP episode for for Dusty Hill? I thought you were going to say for my wife's cat, Bumble. Oh, did the Bumble die? We put it down. Well, that's probably more important than ZZ Top's Dusty Hill. Let's talk about that. I'll put it on the list. Hmm. Hmm. You think it suffered too many dart shots to the head? Oh, God, that was too funny. We had fun with him. Yeah, no, I, I've 
questions as to what what made that kill, uh, switch happen. Mm-hmm. Like, seemed like it could have happened at super any old. time. He was super yeah. old. He had to go. Are you done with cats now? We still have Tumford. I know, but like after, is that the grandfathered in cat that now you're yeah. done with cats? No, I'm not allowed. I'm, I'll I'll move out of here if we get another one. Mm. Heard it here first. How old is uh, your Nikki? Um, Nikki. Isn't that your dog's name? Lily? Your dog? Yeah, the, the dog's name is Lily. Who's Nikki? Uh, Nikki is no one. Nikki. Ah. Joel, well, Joel, Joel do you have a dog? Nikki. Do you have a dog or a pet or a cat or a hamster or anything named Nikki? No, never had anything named Nikki. Well, I mean, it wouldn't have to be ever. I guess it would just have to be within the last six months. <laughs> I was confusing it with uh, John's dog. I decided ready? if I have another dog, I'm going to name it Steve. And if I have another cat, huh, never mind, I'll never have another cat. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Cats are kind of dated, I think. Yeah. They're just cunts, man. Are we in stream? Yeah. I'm trying to start it. I'm waiting for you two cunts to shut up about cats. Is well, I thought most people like to come into like pre existing banter into a podcast, it feels more welcoming. Podcast, yes, right now, right now, cats. cats. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Podcast Right Now, episode 191. Right now, if you spell it in today, is August 15th, 2021. Podcasts right now, and my name is Podcasts John, right meow. and my name's John, and, and I'm gonna introduce some of the i'm going to introduce some of the folks we have on the pod for this week's exciting episode um one of these men is as he shows up every once in a while his favorite animal is sharks he believes in witchcraft and he uh recently agreed to cut off his mustache uh warm podcast right now welcome to never super shark johnson aka my brother joel hey joel Hey everybody, Chomp Chomp fins up. Glad to be here. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's good to see you uh, again. After not, uh, I saw you in person recently, which we'll get into the in, in the episode here. Also on the podcast, this man exists on many a government list. They keep a close eye on this Blendon County boy. He's uh, he recently trimmed his beard. Blendon. Recently trimmed his beard, doing the world a favor there. Uh, Joe TV's JG. Hello. <laughs> that's not all I trim, baby. What else did you trim? His own yeah. circumcision. All of, all of it. Did you re recircumcise? Uh, uh, let me let me ask you this: Has my taint ever smelled better to you? You'll you know, find oh, out. Oh, you went downstairs. <laughs> oh. You, oh no! You got a grundle trim. A little manscaping for TV. Oh JG. yeah! I asked the ladies at the. At the uh, the pen fusion egg roll and 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 trimming place, East meets This West. is a real place for anyone that's triggered. Ooh, this yeah, is an actual oh, yeah. place in Columbus. I, I said, you can uh, look it up. I said, wax me and then egg roll me. No, I don't like it. I don't believe it, and I believe you're just as Wait, hairy I'd down like there to, as you've I'd ever like been. I'd like to envision you eating the egg roll while being waxed. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it depends on uh, on what order they receive the order. So if I if I put in the order to wax first, uh, my my anus is waxed first. If I put in the order to because it's two separate squads, the, the people handling the waxing don't handle the food. Of course, it would be non uh, non non negotiable, uh, right? So this yeah. is all yeah. all backdoor and in between trimming, or did you get the base of your spring roll trimmed up? Hmm. Yep. More of an egg roll, John. No, he's got a spring roll down there. It's not an egg roll. He's <laughs> see through. He's got translucent dick skin. Oh man, like no, no. it, it's it's all it's all eggy white, eggy washed. It's all uh, pre frozen from the Kahiki grill and stuck in the freezer. The ice is knocked off. Uh, it's it's grilled in the microwave. Sometimes a cold center. There you go. Boom. Bada bing. Bada boom. Let's go. 
think we should start a shop and we'll call it butt stuff and they do butthole, butthole grooming colostomy what's all the butt things oh prostate they'll check your prostate out get a bleach in there uh, get your bleach done get a bleach yep get a bleach in there get a good wax for the ladies or for the guys you know either or i think that would be a successful business model in today's time and we'll do house calls i don't know all the ass it's all the ass is what you'd have to call joe can you make ass an acronym because now we're on to something um oh okay um definitely a would be all all the services associ- the association of sexy shitters <laughs> all shitter terrible. services, I think, would be all shitter you know. services. There you go. Yeah. Welcome to all shitter services. My name is Joel. How can I help you? I mean, there's some medical type practices that I don't think they would have the the licensure to to complete. So, guys, in the and weird and wacky news this week, did you hear about the man in Papua New Guinea who put an eel up his ass? I assume that happens somewhere around the world at least once a day. The the way, the way you open that up is not the setup to a joke because it was so descriptive with the man in Papua New Guinea. But man in Papua Papua New Guinea. Uh, Tell us Um, more. It's an old, it's an old superstition that you put an eel in your ass if you have constipation. Um, but it's actually an allegory. You just put your fingers up there and figure things out, you know. But this guy put an eel up there, and it went all the way into his stomach. And killed him. But I have good news. The eel survived. <laughs> holy holy Jesus. hell. Yeah. What was the name it of it? Do they know the name of the eel or the species? Mr. Stankins. Stankins. You made that it's up. It's a Welsh name. You made that up. He traveled all the way to Papua New Guinea right. to do this procedure. From, from where? Where did he travel from? Wales, somewhere in the uh, the, the the Golden Isles there. Hey, he to the way to there. How did he survive between? Well, Wales he had to pay and... his way. He had to pay his way, so he got he did a few he procedures. Also, suck some dicks between there. You're you're asking you're asking Joel all these details. You realize he read the headline of this and he swiped right on by. He didn't read this article. He didn't watch a video of I the did. eel the going in and out. You read the whole uh, article. Hey, Dick sucker. <laughs> all right. Let's all calm down. It's been a while since podcast right now has happened. Uh, Kevin and Carl will hopefully get Wait, them you, back. Did you swipe right on an eel sucking dick? He just did. <laughs> Who, me? No, Joel, Joel swipe right on an eel sucking dick to get the stories of this, this thing that, that uh, ate some assholes. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. It was that, that was the story, and we talked about it. Yeah, but you had to... Okay. I was just going to say, thanks for being back, anyone who's listening to this. Uh, it's been a while since we've done an episode. Uh, apologies all around for this. Summer happened. Families happened. We we all got real busy, and the the pod uh, fell by the wayside for like a like a hot month there. But uh, happy to remember be- quickly why I haven't been on an episode for so long. <laughs> well, we're rusty. We're warming up right now with eel, eel butt stuff and whatever else was discussed. Um, anywho, episode 191, there are rumors forming online through the various networks that podcast right now is listened to that episode 200 will be our final episode and, uh, and, and we'll, and we'll shut the doors on, on this ex- adventure that's taken nearly three years to, to reach, uh, longer uh, than that. it might be, it might be longer than three years. No one knows. No one could know. Um, I'll, I'll say that's all still hearsay. We don't know. So just hang in there. You'll, I'm sure we'll announce something soon. Um, but yeah, if you're hearing us for the first time in a hot minute, we hope you've had a good summer. It's, it, I'm glad to be back in your ears. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward to some some Carl and some Kevin uh, in, in, a, in a future episode. But I'm, uh, I'm excited to I'm excited to sit down with these two boys. Um, what do you guys want to get into first? What do you want to pick apart? How do we how do you want to improve the what? world through? A, a, let's a vocal let's audio some experience. Sound bites. Oh, get we some normally sound have bites some out sound of the way. bites from, for some people. Uh, you know, from some episodes. Let's record some sound bites about what's going to be happening. What's in October? Oktoberfest will be in October. Okay. Well, why don't we? You know, yep. people will save us on our on their phones. 
uh, for when they get a text message or a voicemail. Um, let's record some spooky sound bites. Okay. Um, you get ready for Halloween. Yeah. Wh- whatever you guys are thinking, I think, Joel. I think what he's saying is like if the if the if the podcast ends, then they'll have sound bites for October specifically. No, no, I, I, no, I just want people to be able to prepare. Okay. Ooh, okay. Happy Halloween. Hey, that's that's a good one. Uh, here I got one. I'll do a, okay. I'll, I'll do a zombie. Here's my zombie, uh, zo- my zombie sound bite it goes like this. Arr, I want to eat your, I want to eat your brains off. Arr. This zombie speaks English. This summer podcast right now is back stronger than you've ever believed <laughs> this summer expect this summer. the most <laughs> be delivered the least no kill atrocity um what's what's a good Oktoberfest uh soundbite oh holy shit i thought you were my oh. wife Hey everyone, welcome to podcast right now. Let's drink beer and dance until we forget who we are for the whole day. Everyone gets sunburnt. They all have pretzels in their inside of their shirt. It's a rough I got time. One for you. I got one for you. <laughs> I'll have the pork loin. It's good. It's pretty good. I can't top that. Here's another here's another Oktoberfest one. Oh yeah, I was gonna try that. I that that German style Hofferbrucer IPA. How how does it taste? Oh, it's quite hoppy. It's, you can you know, at, at true Oktoberfest, you're just drinking a bunch of uh, regular. But I'll Uncle. say it again. I'll We're have the pork loin. There you go. In case they didn't get it. The there's first your time. there's your feel good hit of the summer right there. Put that on your phones right now. Next time you go to Oktoberfest, you're gonna want the pork loin. Let's go. Let's talk about some movies, baby. Oh, Joe wants to go right into movies. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we all saw Suicide Squad. Let's get into it, guys. DC Comics Redemption Song Suicide Squad 2. It doesn't It doesn't say 2. What's it called, Joel? Does it have a subtitle? The Suicide Squad. The Suicide the. Squad. Uh, directed by Jimmy Gunn, a.k.a. James Gunn, a.k.a. the guy that made... Guardians of the Galaxy way better than all three of the newest Star Wars movies uh, in, in one in one or two films. I love it. Um, what? Do, how do you? What, you guys want to go with some ratings right out of the gate so we can all kind of know how to navigate this? Let's do it. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll say I'll say eight out of ten. I was extremely extremely happy with with this, and I've seen it twice now. Um, now I sound like a super fan. Damn it! See. I still have my reservations, but we'll we'll talk about that later. Joel, give us a number. How many fishing nine poles? Nine and a half out of ten. <gasps> nine and a half? That's Jurassic Park levels. How dare you? I fucking loved it. I thought it was great. Pretty, There's a king hard, shark. Yeah. King shark's in it. I mean, come on. I'm going to guess Joe. be a shit movie as long as king shark's in it. I'm signed up and sold. We Well, we did introduce you. Um, if folks didn't know, you have a favorite animal, and that is... The aquatic predator known as the shark. Yes, and I hate I hate dolphins, right? And I hate llamas. Well, dolphins are extremely rapey, as we know from David Attenborough's uh, documentary series, uh, uh, "A Dolphin in Time." Hey, we got a Kevin. We got a Kevin joining to in. You. What happened, buddy? Happy Jim? motherfucking birthday! No, 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 no. Hold on. He, it's not happy. Bir- no, it's not happy birthday. Hold on. What's up, Kevin? Wh- wh- you're here. Hello. What changed? Did you text us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I texted the thread. I told you half an hour ago that I would be on in 15 minutes. And oh, um, okay, cool. Yeah, All right. I'm so just right on time. I'm just surprised. You're fine. No, I'm not trying to throw any shade around. I'm just surprised. I didn't know who else we'd be getting tonight. I'm actually feeling comfort right now because um, so far it's been a. It's been, a, it's been a start. Joe Joe's first early idea for podcast entertainment was um, here's some October sound bites for folks to just have on their phone. Uh, Joe, do you want to hit Kevin with any of those, or should we continue He's to got stay a good focused? One. He's got a good one. <laughs> go ahead. No, Joe. let me let me try a new one. No, no, no. You got to hit him. Go. You got to hit him with the with the one the, the no, good one. I, no, well, we, they've already got the. Is it happening right now? I'm a candle. Oh, oh, I'm a candle. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, this is... That was a good creepy one. That was more Halloween themed, I think. Yeah. I want that to be my text message alert. I just realized with this orange shirt, I kind of look like a convict. You do look like you look like a cunt. You organized a dick sucking appointment. Music, and you know we up front. Remember that, Akon. I do. I do like Akon. Akon and Young Jeezy trying to take it easy. (laughs) Hell yeah! Only way to go. And so, you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it on uh, on cassette. Yeah, I heard it. Um, Kevin, how you doing? Kevin, uh, the thousand dollar dog on the podcast. Can we get a round of applause out there in the podcast world? He's here. He made it. This he is looks, how you applaud. He looks healthy. He looks healthy AF. He looks like his facial hair has changed a little bit. That's what men do in 2021. We talk about each other's facial hair. Um, you're looking good. Yeah, yeah. You're looking good, I've, Kev. Yeah, I've just been away from the trimmer for a few days. It'll it'll be back to normal. Um, it, it's been a while since I had a haircut too. I'm I'm past due for that, so I'm looking a little bit, a little no, bit no, slovenly. No, I, go, baby. I heard uh, no. I heard we weren't doing video this week, so I thought it would be okay to show up. Sans <laughs> shave. Is that not the case? Are we? We are. We are yeah, too? you are on the video feed, oh, but not to. You look God good. Damn it. Okay. We, yeah, yeah, we weren't going to, and then uh, Joel really pushed me to get it to make sure. That I the just video asked was. if we were streaming, <laughs> and John's like, "Twist my arm over here." <laughs> but anyway, what, what does your shirt say? I, I can only see the word "talk." That's all it says on it just talk yeah i'm trying to get the message out there that i want more communication just in general did you make that shirt up just for the podcast or you wear that around town too just for the pod but i'll 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 also wear it out but not through the week just on the weekend yeah the the weekdays are not for talking they're for uh they're for working men right yeah let's get to work okay yeah your bre- uh, hey, hey, the weekdays. hey, your break's the over. Your break's over. Fuck Get yeah. back to work. Oh, wait. You want for the weekdays, it says, uh, shut up and be serious. You know? Uh, I have a light blue one for the weekdays, and it just says, shush. <laughs> shush. That's great. Yeah. This is, uh, I fe- Joel, tell me if I'm wrong here. Um, is this a disaster so far? No one's going to want to listen no. to this, right? Can I tell you what I think's going on? Joe, feel free to jump in on this. <laughs> I think you are a, it's like a rubber band that has been used in a while and it gets a little like you're scared it's going to snap. That's kind of how you are right it's now. A cold, you're a little stiff. It's a cold rubber band. You've got to be ready for the curveballs tonight. Well, um, Captain, uh, Captain, Captain Awesome is in the chat. Hello, Captain Awesome. He says, is this really happening? And it's uh, to you. I say, yes, we're here. We're back. We're, we're uh, hopping on. I'm, I'm about some biscuits on the podcast uh not even muting my shit so deal with that captain awesome he's a good man he says he's our number one fan so uh you are uh more than welcome to um get on that chat board and be a part of the conversation i'll uh i'll repeat back anything uh anything you type so yeah welcome to the pod um so yeah, we were we were getting into movies. We just opened a, a can of Suicide Squad, and we were going to talk about our uh, sort of impressions of that movie. So far, we we Joel gives it a nine point five. I went eight. Joe, what was your score? Slash Kevin, did you see it? Um, I don't know if I gave a number, but I feel like I was hovering in the the strong eight territory. Do you want to give it a number now? I'll say strong eight territory. Okay. Okay. I guess. Okay. Eight seven five. Five three zero oh, nine. So I, I've not seen this film. Are we all on the same page? That the the first Suicide Squad was an abortion. Is that yeah? Uh, it's pretty bad. It's a the first Suicide Squad was like it was DC doing so too confused. many. It was kind of like the um the fan the Marvel Fantastic Four that they tried to do not too long ago. Where what happened Good was comparison. they started production on suicide squad and this was the will smith one from i don't know a couple years back more probably more than that um the introduction of harley quinn played by play played by uh margot roby and um they what happened is as far as i understand it and from what i've read and seen is that they were mid-production on that and then deadpool released and deadpool was it was it was 
shooting that far back. Oh yeah, they worked on that, that thing a for a minute. Ago. Yeah, they worked on that for. Okay. They worked on that for a minute, but any and I could be wrong on this, but I I'm pretty sure Deadpool came out massive success, and then they tried to change the tone entirely and kind of inject more mm. of a sense of humor, more of a Deadpool style, um, kind of kind of tone or whatever. Uh, and it, I don't know. Sometimes when you when you reshoot a bunch of shit and go with the B storyline, uh, I guess. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't blame. What am I trying to say? The movie I think, by committee. I think it's too many cooks. Yeah, movie by committee. Probably had three different people on the screenplay credit. Probably had Here, producers my in there. Of you that know. Film. Yeah. Joe, did did we my go interp- see this in the movie theater, bud? I think we did, man. No, 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 we didn't. Okay. We didn't because it looked like a piece of shit um, from the trailers. Yeah. Uh, it came well well after Guardians of the Galaxy. My interpretation was this was DC's attempt to steal the Guardians of the Galaxy formula, which is a bunch of wacky uh, uh, guys who were prone to nonsense, uh, do some shit, and there's a funny soundtrack, which literally there was a funny soundtrack in the first one, but it didn't really quite line up with what they should be doing. Yeah. Um, and then add a bunch of Harley Quinn, like just overdose on Harley Quinn. That was yeah. the recipe for the first one. For the second one, they did the right things in terms of having a bunch of funny, uh, weird outcasts. Uh, have a fun soundtrack that's appropriately placed. Have the right amount of Harley Quinn, who is a great character, but you know not the star of, of the of the show, and uh, do their do their thing. So it worked because it was directed by the guy who literally made that formula to work for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, there you go. DC uh, spiked the ball on that one. You guys won on that one. I'm not looking forward to seeing. And it that was the most DC fun I've had since like. Shaz- Wonder Woman Batman. Sucks. I'll say 1989. Sh- no, I'll say Shazam. I thought Shazam was a good time. And Shazam that, was good. That yeah, came out yes, recently. Yes. Yeah. So because DC is willing to take chances on their non big properties, um, that's where they should be shot yeah. right now. Like no one wants to see another Batman reboot. I don't care if it's the Riddler now, whatever. It's it's gonna be fine. Yeah. But these are the most interesting stories that DC are telling right now. So I phrased it. And- pretty much identically like when wife and i watched it with credits roll and i was and she was like that was so fun and she doesn't give a damn about superhero movies she's not a she wasn't reading comic books at the age of nine forward you know like uh like me and i know super shark and joe i know you 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 have a geek side of you kevin's pretty much just into football and stuff but anyways um i told her you know they'll they'll when it comes to batman Aquaman, Batman v Superman, just Superman, like they they put so much pressure on themselves. And then of course, there's the theory that Chris Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy kind of ruined DC for like a decade because they all tried to match that tone and that world that he built that works for Batman and An ultra realistic superhero right. film. And and what's nice about the the Suicide Squad, the newest one, and Shazam and Teen Titans Go, the movie, like, is that they don't give a shit. Those are like in in their eyes, you know, those are it's lower stakes. It's like, well, we're gonna get we're going to get our, you know, our, our 80 million or whatever, our hundred million. And then we'll peace out from the box office and we'll be good. And even the Harley Quinn movie, the birds of prey, I watched that, uh, was that last year, the year before. And I was just I, halfway through that movie. I was just kind of like, Oh man, this is, this is suicide squad only, again. But the only like, part about that I liked was you and McGregor being a really bad guy, like a, evil bad guy I yeah thought that was nice he was cool with that I, I saw guy. that movie i already forgot you and mcgrayer was in it yeah but i just wanted to echo your um what you what you were saying about how they put so much pressure on themselves for the for the big characters and then it's all the side movies all the side characters all the side teams you've never heard of that those are the best movies that i think dc can uh can make right now until, until they change something and I, I mean i don't know the marvel formula but as far as I could like well, guess is like Marvel. Yeah, go ahead. Like, how how much did you care about Captain Marvel compared to like an Iron Man? Like, it's it's kind of getting to the point where, mm, okay. Well, they it's they one guy versus a. That's kind of how I felt about Black Widow, to be honest. Like, I liked it. I was excited for it. I haven't seen. But that at the one same yet, time, yeah. it didn't contribute much to the overall timeline. You're, example, you're basically like, in the in the Marvels for like the 
the big team ups, like the big it's contributing to the apocalypse and they're not literally not apocalypse because that's a different marvel but yeah. uh, the thanos scenario um i'm gonna go back to dc for a second and say that i i think we will look back um based on what we're saying now about dc and say that the schumacher batmans were shit upon um, because if we like adam west so much we should love val kilmer and george clooney schumer batman film so much because they're just as ridiculous as that. Now and, they are. But at the yes, time now, when they were supposed to be shit hot coolness, they weren't. But now right, when but you I, go back and I watch think, those movies, they're a exactly you know, it's a different tone and but, you know what to expect and it's an awesome ride. But Schumacher exactly. and it's and this is like documented and he said it in interviews and stuff, but uh Joel Schumacher, when he made Batman and Robin and Batman Forever, he he had told press and he had told people in interviews that it was his intention to honor more of the 1960s series, Batman and Robin versus I, I, continue I I, what I Burton was w- doing. So it was this weird hybrid of like d- dark, cheesy sixties. It didn't work. <laughs> Nipples yes, on I think as we get tired more and more of like the dark DC, I think we'll, we'll go back and look at what Batman has done in the past. I think we'll, grow to appreciate silly batman yeah. from the 90s a little bit more um so oh, absolutely dude we're almost living in the demolition man future right now yeah. so once the shinier and cleaner and woker everything gets all that dark gritty shit is going to be like crack cocaine to the the generation z kids you know right. and and so kevin not to spoil it for you or anything because i do think you would probably enjoy it i mean it's it's the type of movie that it doesn't matter that it's the Suicide Squad. It doesn't matter that it's a DC comic movies. It doesn't matter that it's a franchise or that it has characters that you know. The same story with completely new unknown characters that all fit similar archetypes. It's just fun. I mean, it's not going to win Oscars and it's not going to, you know, it's not going to be something that you instantly run and go buy on Blu-ray so you can watch it twice a year, but it's serviceable like plus like there are some giggles in there and it's rated r so and they have fun with that uh as far as like you know violence and language goes um and it's got a great cast Idris i'll tell you why kevin will like it if you have to watch and like a superhero movie it's about as nihilistic as a superhero movie as you could get it's in the same vein as deadpool like it's very deadpool adjacent but it's just it's like they're cursing in guardians of the galaxy it's very nihilistic. Like a lot of superheroes die. It's also the most on-screen DC wow. superheroes ever in a film. Yeah, I, I do like. Um, <clears throat> I like um, if you're watching a superhero movie. Um, one of the constraints that keeps me f- keeps me from enjoying most of them is that uh, the the plot, um, the the arcs are, are very predictable, right? Yep. Traditionally, anyway, in a, in a superhero yep. movie, you know that certain things can and can't happen. Some people can't die. Yep. Um, so that w- that would be one I, I can see positive. Uh, yeah, one positive argument for it is if people are dying, um, then that at least opens up. You know, more things can be happening. That's cool. Yep. Um, th- those late '90s Batman's, um, those are good movies to watch. Like um, with a hangover, I think. Like, uh, if yes. you ever just like wake up and <laughs> you feel like shit and you need to watch yes. a bunch of music videos and then like a real crappy movie from the 90s yes. and uh, fall back asleep halfway, that I think yeah. it fits into that bucket pretty nicely. Yeah. I think that was Ebert's Judgment opinion. Judgment night. I think that was Ebert's <laughs> opinion uh, verbatim of Batman Returns. I think he said, you know, if, if you find yourself in a hangover state, this this will this will scratch the itch. Um. So the premise is, uh, without giving anything away, it's it's a it's a prison that holds supervillains, and if the government needs some black ops shit to go down, they'll they'll pull your card if your power set is uh, you know valuable they stole, to the they mission. They stole that premise from the first one, right? You know, well, I, you know I mean that's just like the comic. Needs needs. Yeah, it's just the comic. What song is this? What? Come together. Uh, oh, okay. There you go. Oh, okay. Um, that's the that sounds uh, like so Aerosmith quick, version. I have a fun. Uh, this is Suicide Squad related, Creamy Boy. Oh, okay. but I have a fun. Uh, a little fun little game we can play right now. Oh, okay. So hold on, um, real real quick before we get into the game. Um, I watched this. Uh, when I went out when I went out west and 
and visited uh, Uncle Uncle Joel there at the Super Shark. And I watched it with um, you and your wife. And she bailed midway or something, but I think she, it was just sleepy time. And then uh, you and I, we, we had a, like a pretty good uh, dose of, you know, fun, fun times going on. And uh, you you were adorable during the entire time we watched that movie. Like, like you, I was in my ass. Like, listen, I was into it. Um, but you were into it on a level that I was almost not into it anymore. You ever watch a movie with somebody where they're like so stoked out that you're like, I don't know, maybe I'll watch this later by myself or whatever. Like there were certain. That's what you did too. I assume I, mean, every, I assume I do time that. I go to the theater with you. John. Yeah, I was gonna say I think I do that to people. So. Well, it's hard too because uh, it's not just how excited he is. He talks through the whole movie when uh, when you go to a, do. a movie with John in the theater. No, no, no. John does this. Um, oh, I do it too. Not, nonstop. Anytime he has a joke, uh, like an Atlanta the theater, theater has to hear about it. Yes. I'm excited. It's I'm like excited Atlanta to be there. Regal. I won't apologize. I'm excited to be there. And I think going to see a movie in the movie theater, um, I represent, you know, that 2002 class clown demographic out there. And I think a lot of guys get uh, a snicker and a and a chuckle out of what I what I offer for a group setting. You know theatrical experience so see i don't don't know if that settles it though because you you can offer (laughs) it does perfectly you you, you can offer five or six uh volleys throughout the uh the previews of a movie and if you get one laugh you might think that's a success but you're still uh you know you're taking everyone else out of the the darkness and the quiet that they thought they were going to buy themselves for two hours. And, and now you've brought it back to, um, you know, basically you have to at least be on the receiving end of an interaction from another person in this time. Right. And uh, that, that's not what they paid for. They, they came to forget their lives and, uh, well, first and you bring all, them out of that. First of all, we're painting a picture. You took them out, John. You took no, them out. No, we're painting a picture here. Like once the movie starts, I'm like waiting for opportunities to shout jokes. I don't do that. Typically. Oh, yeah. You're waiting. They, no, they, just waiting come, they just come to you. They just come to you every 10 minutes. No, you're right. T- typically what I do. And. No, typically what I do is if I you get. study the picture subject matter before you get in there and you're like, okay. No. Where I get, is the comedy? Joe, a great example is when you and I went and saw the movie uh, Gravity in 3D with oh my Sandy God. B and her Korean mm-hmm. baby penis, you know, cells injected into her face. And George Clooney, who started his career when he was 48 in car commercials. And we were this geeking not, out. Not, we not, were having this fun. This not feedback that you gave into the theater. No, I'm, I'm not just getting there. I'm describing the film first. We get there, right, right, we're okay. enjoying ourselves. There's they have this great opening scene. It's this one, it's this one shot. It's moving all around all the characters. It's doing its introduction for the space station, all of the characters, um, their contact, uh, down in Houston, blah blah blah. The you know, just just the the sort of uh atmosphere of the group and everything. And then um I, I think I screamed space or something like that. I was just excited. Like, and it was all, and it was at That's a exactly loud part. exactly what you screamed. Yeah. 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 And I, and That's I just exactly get, I get excited and I just, sometimes I scream stuff out or I but laugh, okay. or I you, laugh you, really loud. Joel, you get okay. it. You, Joel you gets scream it. space well, on many yeah. occasions. No, there's a plot. There was a couple plot twists in the Suicide Squad film that literally blew my mind. Oh yeah. Like I didn't expect, I don't want to spoil anything, but no, Everyone there was will know what I'm talking no, there about. was one part of the movie where you were talking about it as if you were talking about it like three hours after we watched the movie at a bar down the street or something. But like we were still in the scene and you looked at me and you're like, D- do you see what's going on? I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're it's still going on now. Like they're still doing it now. So like, just keep watching the movie. <laughs> it was, I, was like, I don't know see what's happening. We is had this fun. really happening? We have fun. Basically. Yeah. I think the takeaway is don't ever expect a quiet setting. If you're going to see a movie with me right. or my brother. Yeah. Yeah. So w- what makes me bitter about that is, um, so if you and Joel, you're both loud people, right? You go to a, a place that it ostensibly is going to be quiet, a quiet setting. You all watch a movie together in the dark. And if, if you guys make noise, you can overtake, the uh, the quietness of, of the setting, right? As a quiet person, I can't go to a place that's supposed to be loud and just be extra quiet and draw the draw the attention away mm. from the loudness. That's true. And that makes Point. me like I, I can't just go to a concert and and sit, you know, and close my mouth really tightly and have people pay attention to the quietness I'm making. Yeah. And um, 
So I, I think it's unfair, and I, you know, I think you should. You could, you you could should cross your legs. I should be evaluate. Okay. All right, this we're getting feedback. We're getting we're getting some information here from the chat. Let me read this off so they know that they're a part of the presentation here um, from Merman Mer, Merman Rod. Um, if the joke sucked, shut up. If it's good, you might as well be Bill Murray uh, next to me at uh, that movie. Okay, there you go. Conformist is might as well. What movie? I, is I don't. Bill I didn't. Murray I didn't. I didn't really get the comment. It's fine. Um, I, I think he just means he would be happy if if the joke is good. He'll be happy that yeah. it was made as as if he were sitting next now, to Bill Murray. Now, Kevin, as you as you said that, that it did make me it did make me think about like. So, like, if I'm in a public restroom, I do this thing. If it, so, I walk in. Getting out the dick. No, walk into the urinal. Yeah, yeah, you know the drill. I, I, I walk in. It's empty. Okay, but then if someone yeah. else comes in, I look to see if I know them, and then if I don't, but they look cool, I think I still think about like saying something or engage. Like, I, I, I if I'm alone with someone, I want to like, I want to, I want to say how their, like, ask how their day is or something. I don't know. That's that's fine. I think that's fine. That's that is that's that different. is less that is less out of bounds than talking during a movie. But that's like being con- like congenial. But like what, the movie, it is invasive. Right. So so like I guess it's a, it's a little more specific than that because it'll be at one of my trivia events that I do, and so like there's a seventy percent chance that someone that walks in to the bathroom to pee with me is going to be like a team so i could i could like shout out their team now i'd be like hey, yo, hey, yo big mike with a big dick you know like try to make some bathroom jokes or whatever um but then if it's someone i don't know i have to just i just like be, i usually just hum a song levi's like, levi's jeans over here <laughs> i think you should just start caffing it up at your trivia events just start pissing in a bottle yeah, that's so you what never I have to interact them ever again. And truck driver style, just behind the rig yeah. there. No, I'm not doing that. Listen, it's the way of the road. It's the way of the road. All right, yeah, let's get into uh, let's get into a Suicide a Squad game. game or a, a Joel game. Let's do I, it. I think I think uh, Joe is especially going to like this game. Um, I'm going to run so, to my car and make a drink while you guys do this. Oh wait, you're not going to play? Say he's going to run. Why are you running to your car and make a drink? It's for a bucket point. Two separate things. Can I play this game? Am I going to be competitive in this game? I think you'll. I think. I. I think you'll. You. Do you it. waited too long. That means no. That means no. I was being polite. That means no. I was being polite. You sit down with your. You told me. Up. You told me everything I need to know. Yeah. You, you told me you like this shirt. shirt. You told me you like this shirt. <laughs> I did. I, I do like that why shirt. Are your, why are you running to your car and make a drink? Where are your drinks? It's two separate things. I'm running to the car to get uh, vape juice, and then I'm running to the okay. kitchen to make yeah, a drink. Yeah, okay. It sounds like you got. All right, I'll be guy. back. I'll be back five minutes. You guys have fun. All right, Joe. So, uh, one of the most amazing records that the Suicide Squad broke is Sylvester Stallone has had a number one box office film oh, for the last yeah, for six this. decades. Yes, good. For so him. here's what you for guys him. have to do: is we're going to go through each decade. And you have to each Ten of in you a minute? tell me which. No, oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, each of you are going to tell me what movie for that decade held that number one box office slot okay. that also starred or featured Sylvester Stallone. Joe, honor okay. system and write them down, okay? Wait, are we writing them down or are we just yelling them? Oh, yeah, Joe. I think you can. We're, yeah, we'll just do them at the same time. I'll okay. do one, two, three, and you both say them and then we can talk about it. Well, All right, so the, for the. Or I'll I'll just take turns, John. No, 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 no. I was gonna say I was gonna say say the decade and then let both him and I rapid fire until one of us gets it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Rocky. Um. Nineteen seventies. Rocky John got it. <laughs> Damn you, son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, that's my mom, bro. Um. Nineteen eighty. Rocky three. Rocky four. Rocky five. Rambo two. Yep, first blood. Rambo, one, Rambo, first blood. Nice, one to one. Or, wait, it's first blood or? Okay, first blood. Yeah, thanks, Joe. <laughs> I don't think he cared. I think he literally just had Rambo. I, I thought first list. blood was out before that, but okay. That's 1982. Uh, okay. 1990s. Demolition, Demolition Man. Demolition Man. Uh, Daylight. Oh, <laughs> um, hold on, hold on. Ugh. You just give me something to drink. I gotta get in a character here. Um, gotta get there. Rocky Four. 
Yeah. Uh, that's a good that's a good angle. Um hold on, hold on. Nineties. Oh, cliffhanger, let's go. Good job. Wow. That was number one for a year? It was Joe. Holy okay. Shit. Okay. That was nominated for three Academy Awards. A and, lot of people forget that. And a lot of people forget that Michael Rooker is in that movie, who also co-starred in Suicide Squad. Boom. And he didn't play a bad guy. No. Well, no, Michael Rooker was a bad guy in Demolition Man. In, I, I know. In oh, the 90s, he was a bad guy in everything. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, cliffhanger. 19, or 2000s. 2000s. Uh, the Dispendables. Rocky. Rocky Ex- Balboa. Expendables. Uh, no, Expendables two, Expendables three. What a woman wants. That's Mel Gibson. Damn it. Um, <laughs> Stallone in Creed two thousand. Ooh, Did Creed come out. No, that's the teens, and that might be our teens one. I think. Hmm. You guys want a year? Sure. Yeah. Take a year. Two thousand one. Crash. Oh, it was, was um, Spy Kids. No? Spike Kids 3. Spike Kids 2. Spike Kids 2. Lava Girl versus Shark Boy. He was a computer program in that movie. I am the law. Judge Dredd. No. Uh, Great film. Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider was in Judge Dredd and Demolition Man? Yep. Damn. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, was a, he had a good agent. Someone in the chat said Kindergarten Cop. No. <laughs> That's the yes, other really Rado. strong guy. Yeah. All right, hold on. We can do this, Joe. Uh, Copland, no? No, nope. so that was Copland. 90s. That was 90s. Um, Assassins. Here comes another hint. It's uh, a sports film. <sighs> Remember the t- Stallones. Um, shit, man. Um, sports I don't know if I've actually Ford seen this versus Ferrari. There's another hint. Don't give us all the uh, hints if we don't need them, man. Let's shut it down. I'm gonna if keep we giving hints until you get it right. Uh, so it's, it's a, more exciting. It's kind of a lame way of doing trivia, but go on. I mean, growing a beard and shaving off your mustache is a lame way of growing a beard. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, sports movie involving cars. A sports movie involving Daylight. Daytona 500. Daytona 500. Daytona. Damn it. What's it called? What's it called? People are screaming at their radios. No one is because no one is 40. (laughs) Streaks. It's like daylight. um, Street street driving. Um, Driven. The driven is the film. Drive. Uh, Driven. Um, I saw that. It, have yeah, it, has, but, uh, I haven't seen that movie. Have you guys that, right? seen that movie? Oh wait, hold on. That, hold on. That's the title, Driven, right? Driven. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see it because it shows it, his eyes on the poster, like I'm driving. Well, you know what the good one is? Is uh, it's it's Tommy Tommy Cruise in the '90s, right? What was that one called? Remember he had a oh, Days of Thunder. Yeah, Days of that's on the left. Yeah, if you gotta yeah. watch a a shitty NASCAR movie, just watch that one, and then you're done forever, right? All right, two, that was the 2000s, 2010. Okay. Zuh. Creed. Rocky Five. Expendables, Expendables. Two, Expendables Three. Ooh. Um, wow. The Rocky Two re release. No. Um, <laughs> the director's cut. To, <laughs> yeah. This one. Guardians of the Galaxy Three. Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Guardians Avengers of the Galaxy. Two. Avengers. Guardian of the Galaxies Fuck. Volume 2. Kill Bill. Um, all right, give us a year. You're going to get pissed. It's 2010. Revenant 2. You've said sequels to this film, but you haven't said the original. Guardians of the Galaxy. <sighs> Son of a gun. Son of a James Gunn. Rocky Five. Doctor Reed. Doctor Doctor Pimple Popper. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren is also in the film. Expendables. Yep. Good job, John. No, we definitely started off with Expendables. John nope. said Expendables two and three. He didn't say the I first. I feel one. like okay. And then you left it alone, Joe. And the two thousand and twenties. Suicide Squad. Good job, John. One. Good job. That was a fun little game. He's been he's done he's a pretty successful guy. Me? I know. No, Sylvester Stallone. I 
I get hey. it before in the morning. Hey yo, you know before in the morning. Hey yo, but this I uh, I won the game and you lost the game, I Joe. Every hey. single night. Hey Joe, it's not about how many times you lose the trivia. It's about how hard you lose and how many times you can fight the fight. The best part about getting knocked down is getting back up. Back up. Fuck you. Joel wins the... Have you the... tried the pork loin? <laughs> Joel wins the Stallone impression competition. Congratulations. You get a bucket point as well. Oh, bucket points tonight. All right. That's it. Let's move on. Um, is there another movie, Johnny, you want to talk about? Um, I, all I was going to say that is... If you haven't seen the new um, Purge movie, Joe, did you watch the new Purge? Purge Forever. No, didn't people get murdered during that? Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I was. I was just. I was just as like a. We don't got to get into it. Click P, a quick PSA. The the new movie Purge Forever. It's it's what's nice about all of the Purge movies is that um. The setup is fun, and then the and then they put the put the you know, the, the public service announcement up on the screen saying the purge has begun and everyone locks their doors and then the purge starts. And then, um, that's when all of those movies kind of stop being fun. It's like after the first, after Lena Hetty couple hours and, yeah. uh, Ethan Hawke. Yeah. After the actual in theater murder. Yeah. My, my favorite nice. part of the purge movies, all of them is the day before the purge. Like, Oh man, it's going to get weird out here tomorrow. And then um, this looks one, like we're having apples. This one deals a lot with um, border control and tries to tackle um, racism in a, in a fun, a fun way. So I actually liked it how they, how they did it. But, uh, but then of course there's the rule that every movie made after the year 2018 has to be two hours and 15 minutes long. And it's really long and they could have cut out a whole shitload of sneaking around and trying to get unpurged at uh, at, the, at the middle and end, and it'd have been fine. But anyways, avoid that one. Um, how how I, could I, you get unpurged? Just get this, in a river, like get in a river and float to the south. Or... How to get un- just, unpurged? unpurged? Uh, you just scoop scoop all your puke back up out of the toilet and drink it down. Oh, oh my gracious! Oh. Um, and then the other one I wanted to bring up, uh, it's. Yeah, it's a, it's a movie. It's a documentary. Uh, it's called uh, Woodstock '99. It's on uh, Netflix right now. It was recommended to me by the Super Shark, who saw it one night before I saw it in his own home, and then I watched it again in his own home. Um, a lot of Joe, you would you would like it for sure. I mean, as as we know, Woodstock '99, total disaster. This documentary sort of covers all of that, but then in addition, sort of offers up like you know why. It was it, it didn't work out why they ran out of water, why, <clears throat> you know, the it gets pretty philosophical, too. It does. There's so like, yeah, there's definitely about some opinions. generation without anything to be angry at. Yeah. And, then, and so because they have nowhere to put that anger, it that's where like Limp Biscuit and Corn and like yeah. all these Rage Against the Machine. Oh, the whole genre and, of new metal, yeah. like where that came from. Yeah. Just aggression for aggression's sake. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and openly anarchist, openly rebellious, you know. Columbine had just right? happened, like a like a two months prior to all this. Yeah. So like, what, what just, just happened? Columbine, the shooting oh, at Columbine. 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 Yeah. Do Do you think that uh, there will ever be a cause that uh, all white people join up that they are not able to afford uh, mortgages? Do you think that there will ever be a mortgage stock? Is that a call so for, the, again? for white people to to join in? Hands. Did you say a boarding stock? Mortgage, mortgage stock. Mortgage stock, I think he said. Turns out that mortgages are increasing. We've got college degrees. Yeah. We're white. Where are the neighborhoods we <laughs> can live? This is a leap. This is a leap. Is this leading into probably. a game? Do you have... Do yeah. you have a game about white people and mortgages? No, or? no. I'm, I'm just Name thinking of that above, uh, white person. <laughs> um another fun thing they bring up early in the documentary so no no real spoilers is that the would not uh the Woodstock uh, 69 the original Woodstock was no um you know 
it, it, it wasn't like a perfect festival as far as like large scale music festivals go. There were riots there. Dilly. There were fires yeah, there. Of no, I know, but but people, people rapes, getting openly raped. Yes, yes. Right, but in I mean, up until I mean, when you compare them, it's like okay, one one was great and one was trash. But like, yeah, um, well, that's, there are shitty things that, at every Woodstock. That, but, that's the that's the effect of everyone having like cameras and stuff, right? Well. Well, no, no, because in '99, not everyone had cameras. It was like MTV cam- was the only yeah. formal camera crew there. No, no, pe- people weren't filming shit on smartphones or anything in '99. No, they were still. You would still take pixelated. Uh, Nokia's had had cameras on them, right? None take of that. Pictures. None of that footage snake, was used snake, in snake format. No snake format. No. Um, what I was going to say was there was the Woodstock '69 uh, documentary that came out, and that kind of like just sealed it all up and bookended the entire experience for future generations to yeah to look back and be like okay that's wow there's hendrix and there's mama cass and and there's the fella from uh, you know the, that other band that you that you love well here here's another bullshit theory i'll i'll float is that maybe coming out of woodstock 69 um, there was interest or whatever in, in having it wrapped up as if it had been kind of an idyllic festival. Maybe the generation in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, maybe they would rather have had this festival and, and have it be kind of a, an abortion and a, uh, you know, a moral sort of... Um, You're, that's uh, a wild way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, as, as you get uh, later into... You get farther away from the 60s, and I think people became kind of more uh, interested in their own kind of, uh, you know, sick. Um, um, they became more interested in in um, in finding themselves depraved or whatever. They, they didn't want to... Yeah, uh, beaten down. Yeah, they, they didn't want <laughs> anyone to walk away thinking that it was a perfect thing. They would rather have uh, have had this, you know what I'm trying to say, this radio. I know what you're trying to say. It's like that recent Rick and Morty episode with the pinhead hell demons. Yeah. The guy's like, you're sad, which makes me sad, and being sad makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, from the chat, they say there's another uh, music festival doc, um, the the Monterey Pop Festival. I think I'm reading that right. Yeah, Monterey Pop Festival. That might be another one similar to what Kevin was describing, sure. where like the event planners, I, I think, would would hope for it to fail, but but it succeeded instead. Or There's a lot of bullshit just yeah. about the planning of it, though. It was a little fire festy because it's like the campsite's two, almost two and a half miles away, and then each stage is about a mile apart from one another. Yeah, It was on this old abandoned Air Force base, and so they're all walking on this concrete, like, asphalt tarmac, and it was 104 degrees, and, like, on the ground, it was, like, 110 degrees. Like, it was ridiculous. And then bottled water cost $6.00. He says, Beer, oh, all the uh, porta potties were overflowing. Like it was just a disaster. Um, Lots Ram- of titties, though. Yeah, uh, Ramrod says a uh, lot of lot of stage wrecking. A lot of the the Who destroys the stage. Hendrix burns a guitar um, in this documentary. Um, Joe, you you linked me not a documentary, but just a live performance from uh, Coachella. Or no, I'm sorry, Lollapalooza 2021. You, anyone can watch it for free on on YouTube. Joe, you want to tell them what band you can you can see their entire set, an hour Genesis. worth of delicious music. Joe, may have lost him. Probably we lost, Genesis. We right? lost him. Anyways, um, yeah, Limp, Limp Biscuit. Uh, they oh. their their entire uh, their entire set from Lollapalooza did, is up on, do, on YouTube right now. Did they do Golden Cobra. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing. It's. Um, what is Fred Durst doing with his hair right now? He's got like Colonel Sanders hair. No, he he dressed as like a dad for the whole event, and when he comes out, um, <laughs> so this so this documentary is popular right now, right? Like, or, or I mean, it's 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 on Netflix, so people are probably checking it out. But anyways, if you were una- unaware of who Limp Biscuit was, you got a pretty good idea from that documentary, right? And so they come out, and he's dressed all dadded out. And uh, they get, they go into some of their early songs and they, they take a break. And he says, uh, he's on the mic and he says, uh, you know, hey, um, this isn't no, you know, we're, we're you know, Lollapalooza. It's so cool. Is it, doesn't it feel good to get out of the house and all this? And uh, he says, uh, this isn't going to be, 
another Woodstock 99, but we are going <laughs> to party like it's 1999. And then they go into break stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. $3 bills. Y'all coming in uh, from Ramrod in the chat. No. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I like a good documentary and music documentaries in general seem to kind of tickle, tickle my pickle in a certain way that, you know, maybe just historical documentaries or whatever might not. Um, it's fun to see how, whether it's a disaster or, you know, kind of one of those iconic albums or songs or moments in history from, from, from the music world, uh, in a positive light, like either way, it's fun to, it's, I, I, just sign me up all day. Like if you could just, um, if there was a document, a uh, documentary gener- generator like service where like you could just put in your favorite band and it would poop out an hour and a half of like the year was 1989. It would just go right into your, your favorite bands document documentary. I, w- I would be all about that, but, um, yeah, Woodstock 99 streaming on Netflix, watch a bunch of white people roll around in, in poop water. It's, it's a good time. <laughs> make you feel bad about yourself um, i think we wrapped up the movies pretty well yeah we so yeah suicide squad yes purge forever skip it maybe woodstock 99 anything else anybody see anything else i think we kind of i have a it. tv show is this the time to talk about it i think so visual marvel's, visual media. marvel's what if yeah it just, just started yeah um, have you seen it yet? Anybody? I have no, I, I haven't yet. I'm I'm looking forward to it. The, it it's... is um, way better than I thought it was going to be. The produ- it's like highest level Disney cell shaded style animation that is just something very unique and really a uh, cool way to see it. Apparently, it's the same studio that did Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, and uh, it takes a crazy a Marvel story and puts a crazy spin on it. And uh, the first one is, what if a, uh, the girl, Agent Carter, became Captain America? Yep. So it's kind of a girl power tale. Captain, but, um, yeah, it's uh, Carter, right? Captain Carter then, yeah. Yes. But that um, inspired me or to make ahead, a what if ahead. trivia Sorry. game. Ooh, an- Just another, another game. trivia oh, I, I'm, game. I'm back in time for this. Yeah, you are. So Sorry, I was talking about what if, Joe. Now. Oh, you're fine. Uh, I, I, didn't like the, 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 I didn't like the, the cartoon. Does that matter? Oh, tell me why. Well, it's, um, an, it's animated, it, but how's the animation? Marvel has never been... The animation is very good, but okay. it felt like it was um, a little too kiddy, uh, I guess. I don't know. I liked it. It was fun. I mean, it is kind of for kids. I watched it with my kids. Well, and we're talking yeah, about a side, 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 what if animated series for Marvel streaming on Disney Plus. So well, manage your expectations I, probably too. Like, the, I, like with a what if series, just like the comic books, in my opinion, you're going to get some good ones. You're going to get some stinkers. And I think out of this whole series, if there's three episodes that are like, oh, OK, that's cool to explore that idea, then um, then I'm then I'm good, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'm coming off of somebody who loves Batman the animated series as like that is definitely for kids, but I think it holds up for adults too. So maybe given time, I'll feel that same way about the What If series. It's yeah. like okay, that's definitely for kids, but it it would hold up for adult, adults uh, in terms of language. I don't put it in the uh, world of like just animated series as far as comparing it to other animated series. I put it in the world of uh, the Marvel shows that are coming to disney plus so like i would hold this one i would have different expectations for the what if series that i would for loki or for the the wandavision so you know what i mean like that kind of shit la wandavision yeah it's the new <laughs> latina <laughs> version of it no wandavision <laughs> remember like uh, you know what i mean joel do you understand what i'm saying like the live I action do. with with the actors from the movies um portraying their roles and possibly changing canon for the MCU, like the what if seems more like here's here's a little, here's a little treat to just kind of tide you over. You can like it yeah, or hate well, it. It doesn't matter. It's part of your subscription. You know, I think we might see it again, though, because they end each episode with like Earth 728, like they title the universe because they're so they're, they are considering that canon like they're creating a multiverse. But what's the one we're very familiar with? The 616. Is that 616. right? 616. Yeah. 616. Yeah. 
And I came up with a little trivia. I love the What If comics. They're all, the What If and Elseworld have always been fun reads because I don't need to know about anything going on. It's like Superman lands in Russia. Go. I got one right here. What if Wolverine? What if Wolverine led, led Alpha, Alpha Flight? Flight? Perfect. Ex- That's so great. You have. It I right have it there. like so, right on top, right here. <laughs> I have oh. five What If titles, and you guys need to tell me which of these five What If titles. Um, is bogus. Okay. These are some wild ones, though. Okay. I love it. And and um, you know so what you're, sucks you're is the one. Answer down, and then we'll go around. Here's what sucks. Well, maybe I'll save it. Maybe this is part of my strategy. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So you're gonna write your answer down. Okay. It's A, B, C, D, or E. Okay. Um, A. What if Aunt May was written or was bitten by the radioactive spider? B. What if Professor X had become the Juggernaut? C. What if Iron Man became Doctor Doom? D, what if Marvel Zombies was Marvel Werewolves? And E, what if Wolverine became King of the Vampires? Nee, nee, nee. Wow. So only one of those is fake? One of those is fake. Can we get them again? Yes, first one, Aunt May is Spider Lady. Uh, Professor X is Juggernaut is B. C is Iron Man is Doctor Doom. D is Marvel Zombies or Marvel Werewolves. And E is Wolverine is the King of the Vampires. Okay. I think I have mine. Thumbs up when you're locked in. I've read some of those, so... Okay. I'm good. Uh, yeah, I for sure knew some of them were real. Or... or... Or not? I don't. No one. No one could know. Um, are you, are you locked in? Is everyone locked in? I'm locked in. Yeah. Okay. So the chat like C, uh, right now, which I believe was that a, a Xavier becomes Juggernaut. Iron, no, Iron, Iron Man. Iron Man becomes Doctor Doom. Okay. Um. um okay. I'll, I'll, I'll answer. I went with. Or go I ahead. went with D. That sounds the craziest. Yeah. And um, may definitely become Spider Man at some point. <laughs> And uh, I forget all the other ones. So, yeah, I went with D. I don't know. D. John went with. I also, say, I also said D. Um, I know for sure that A and B were real issues, or at least I think I remember that. Um, I, w- I was flirting with E as well. Wolverine, King of the Vampires. But yeah, I went D. Sure. Oh, I, d- I didn't know if I was supposed to be playing. What's this game? Just say a letter. D. Okay. We all went D. So in Marvel Zombies, uh, the Reed Richards mistakenly reversed the Phantom Zone, or the uh, negative zone, I should say, and that's where the zombie universe started to come into play. In the comic books, Wolverine went into his feral form and actually turned into a werewolf, but they did not create a Marvel werewolf. We all got so it. Everyone got a point. Kevin, you won. Which is a tie. Hold on, hold on. Kevin, you won. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted. How, 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 how. I'm going to um, get a so beer. It's a t- and uh, so, uh, yeah, it just neutralizes the game. How's that sound? <laughs> or I can but do a tiebreaker. Can I, can I, I don't have a point? Oh, yeah, Joe. You said D2, though. Yeah, but yeah, everybody gets a blue point. point. So, Kevin. No, but... But what if I got a point? I'm fine with it. Let me bargain with you for a point. Great. I I said the answer first, and so that makes it the rightest. And you had good rationale, because Aunt May definitely did become Spider-Man. It's weird. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So hard. So hard. And I just read last night Iron Man becoming Doctor Doom. It's like a Freaky Friday situation. Pretty fun. It's not, though, because it's, it's not equitable. I feel like if Doctor Doom became Iron Man. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Doctor Doom is uh, pretty solid. As a... he might be the best bad guy. Him and Norman yeah. Osborn. Yeah, yeah. I- I'm liking what I'm seeing from the Carnage specs from the, the trailer. Have you seen the Venom Two trailer? Yes, Woody Harrelson. Yeah, could be fun. Why do you think the symbiote is afraid of the red symbiote? 
Uh, it's probably something weird they added in there just to make it. Because he's yeah. red. Yeah. He's red. Kevin, what do you think about the, the Carnage trailer? I don't even a, know. A weird full head of hair. Kevin's regretting yeah. logging it's on so, right now. Yeah, it's, re- <laughs> it's really weird that he has a full head of hair because, like, in the original trailer, um, he didn't have, like, he had half hair. Oh, yeah, like, you're right. He had, yeah, he had, like, some hair on the half of his head, but then the other half, like, didn't have his. his and then he has, like, full hair. And it's like the red symbiote is, uh, you know, that has hair too. It's like, what is even going on, you know? Does it, does Carnage have hair? No, Kevin's talking like a sports analyst. He he's never seen a, a goddamn clip Yeah, of this Carnage trailer. doesn't have hair. But the red symbiote, um but he had half hair, right? He, got the fuck <laughs> he had dog. like a tight bowl. Hey guys, did uh, you know me and Kevin hit a ball in the air sixty seven times in Colorado? What? With, no. Yeah. No. It was Kevin, myself, Josh Reno, and Aaron Baskin, the ukulele player, and we hit that ball 67 times before it touched the pool. It was a real trip. So start your podcast right now, record books. Got to be on video for it to count, and the ball can't exit not, frame. That's not a record I, I think we're keeping, but, but that's Do you guys think you can beat it? Though. Do you think Joe, Carl, and like Tyler and not John could beat it? Not a chance. If, I, if it was just me... Maybe, but not with I, that. Team. I wouldn't wouldn't want to keep that. I wouldn't even try myself. Well, if any listeners out there want to challenge us, you need four buddies, a pool, a volleyball, and uh, you can't hit it twice. But if you have to, you can use any part of your body besides uh, your hands. Other than the hands, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. with my own fucking team. Oh. There you go. We have a T- TKG jumping in the mix here. He says uh, with, well, you his, can only, with his own team. And that's yeah, no you fair. Can, you can only use your hands the the one time, and then the rest of it would just have to be other body parts 66 times. It's going to be hard. But he would have a <laughs> team of he would have a team of physically you know, trained yeah. Marines. It'd be like Top Gun. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if he had three other guys from the Army, he could probably do it. But it's then the... Just, uh, Maybe Jimmy. maybe brings a good talking point with if uh, TKG is in there. What do we think about uh, we're losing Afghanistan to uh, to 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 whomever wants it? Because it seems like what I'm are we doing? Very, I'm very glad about it because I put a sizable bet on Bovada like three years ago. I knew this was going to happen. So you you stand to, to profit from it. That's right. Wonderful. Good. Good for you. No, I don't. I don't care. I, I think it oh, shit. happened twenty years ago, right? Right. Yeah, it seemed like a dicey proposition. So what's happened? The we we let Afghanistan go. We're out. What happened? <laughs> we pulled Alabama, out, and they, they started taking over the country. And we're sending three thousand troops in to evacuate the embassy or something. That's I think okay. that's. So I should I should still just like go to work tomorrow, or what? What do you want me to do? Okay. <laughs> That that's kind of what my question is. What's the right amount of concern that I should do here? Well, if you don't have an American flag in your front yard, then you're not helping. I know that. <laughs> okay. Sh- should I do half mast or? Uh, not until the new year. Okay. Okay. Get an American flag. Fly it full. Don't let it touch the ground. Hey Joel, yeah, do you, Joel, do you know what you're supposed to do if you if an American flag if you're around and an American flag does touch the ground? You know what you're supposed to do with the flag? You're supposed bury to shit it on it and for burn two it. years. Hold on, dig it up, bury it. You're good to go. Isn't that what the koshers do? The kosher Jews do? No, do you if know like for a real? Fork touches bacon. They have to bury you, the fork. You burn it, right? You, you're supposed to burn it. You say you burn it. Uh, the correct answer is you, you pick it up off the ground. You gotta cut it up first. No, you don't cut it. No, no, no. <laughs> you just pick it up. It's fine. You brush it off. And you is put it, it back on your pole. Is it like a fucking pet cemetery situation? What, the flag is never yep. going to fly the same after touching the, the ground? The old Indian tribe. <laughs> That's disrespectful. Mm. Anyways. The, uh, the red symbiote, is um he touched the ground once, and then you didn't burn him, and look what happened then. And now he's more powerful than ever. Let's just all cross our fingers yeah. we don't get the orange symbiote back. Ooh. God damn it. That's a close one. Is that close which one. one's that, John? 
um, anti venom. Whoa. No, that's Donald Trump this is what I was saying. Venom's I got, back. I went Carl. I went full Carl. Oh, cool. What? Someone has to be offended here. I'm being I'm covering Carl's shift tonight. I'm offended. I want things to be better, but I won't lift a finger to make it happen. <laughs> Anyways, um I don't know, guys. Joel went to the Renaissance Fair. Joel, did you see an asshole in a kilt? You want to tell us that story? Let me just tell you, from a thousand dollar dog perspective, no, from a thirty thousand point of uh, thirty thousand foot point of view. Yeah, yeah. How come county fairs, roller roller coaster parks, <laughs> and now the Renaissance know. Fair all has the same type of people going there? Losers? Like, is that what you mean? Losers with a hammer well, it's and all like, summer? It's like sleeveless t-shirts, a little overweight, sometimes a lot, fanny packs. <laughs> hold, on. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, fanny hold on. He's describing packs. losers. Hold so on, far. hold on. Just because there's Parmesan on the pizza doesn't mean I don't like the Parmesan, guys. Listen, half of us are overweight and half of us own a fanny pack, so just s- slow down, okay? Slow down. Okay. Choose your words. But you guys know the type, right? It's just, it just baffles me. It doesn't matter where in the world in the United States you go. If you go to a county fair, some concerts, uh, like Woodstock '99. If you go to uh, roller sc- yeah. like roller coaster. No, park, I know what you. Just I know what you mean. It's, it's the demog- White trash. It's, yeah, it's the demographic that they market to, and that is uh, low income. But it's a fun crowd. Yeah. Think about it. Caucasian. These are people that like. Yeah. They, they like going to county fairs, r- roller coaster theme parks. Yeah. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> Nothing wrong fairs. with it's roller coasters. Crowd. Hold on. Nothing wrong with roller no, coasters. No, but it's a fun crowd. It's a it's a fun crowd. That's so I also we used to dress like that all the time that I go into that scenario. I do wear a fanny pack and a white uh, t-shirt. A basketball and shorts, shorts on too, just in case yeah. you get a lap dance. You run into what? you run no. into. You run into fewer you run into fewer issues if you just conform to their to the group and and go. Well, ahead. it's lovely. They tried to take all my money. There's pretzels for six dollars. Yeah. I ate a chicken leg. I saw a little person, which is always a delight. Yeah. Um, lots of great shows. We saw these people like juggling fire and stacking up chairs and blow darting balloons from in between this woman's legs. That was a little intense. Um, I think. I think there might be such a thing as uh, people who don't have a very active um, social life with like close friends. And so their idea of going out and having a good time with people is just to be in like large crowds. Hmm. Once again, that's a very interesting take. I like it. That makes sense. I mean, or, I do feel like those people are pretty communal, though. As John put it, losers. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and the this is like bad light people, <laughs> well, bad light, and, Coors Light, Miller High Life people. And in case you were unaware, I don't know where you think they get their this where they how they how do they staff these things, but it's from the people that go to them. So it's oh yeah, there are yeah. carnies telling me where to park. Big old long half yeah. inch of ash on his cigarette, and yeah. he had this little JBL clip on speaker right here that was like. I think it was Slaughter. I couldn't quite tell. Maybe it was Pantera, but it was playing some, like, metal. Yep. Park here. Stop. Stop. Uh, From (laughs) from the chat. uh, Who was Slaughter? uh, From the chat here. uh, Odds are uh, you've relied on a man with a fanny pack at some point in your life, so... Like a lifeguard? The stuff? No, I mean... Bloody toes? No, if if you're at an event like this and Joe comes along... And you don't like your keys poking you in the pocket all night. And you can say, hey, bud, you might. I, I just noticed you had a purse tied around your uh, weight. You Water mind... Parks is a good place to have a fanny pack. Yeah, you don't you need to your woman. Just put it around your waist. Yeah, maybe She's you need to a... be bashful about it. Listen, guys, I probably have three yeah. fanny packs within arm's reach. I'm not against the fanny packs. I shouldn't even brought that into the scenario. Yeah. It's like cool, cool cigarettes, Miller High Life. Okay. Kid Rock. I'm going to give you flavors. Kid Rock is a flavor. Faded tribal um, tattoos. Jeans with rips in them. Some Kid are Rock legit rips and some Rock are like and aesthetic rips. Form. Anyway, the Renaissance, it was lovely. <laughs> I ate a giant turkey leg. I drank a beer. 
My kids had fried ice cream. It's good fun. It's good American fun. We're not. Is we're that, not trying does to it judge. happen around the world though? Yeah, like, yeah, do, yeah. They Renaissance, have one in at, at least in the Midwest. Yeah, they have um, one in Ohio for sure. You know what, what was cool at the Renaissance of America? Sorry, Kev. Um, probably not outside of America. I wouldn't guess. I, I don't know if any other places would fetishize uh, the Renaissance that way. But the uh, um, there was a glass blower at a Renaissance fair we went to um, in the last couple of years. That that was. Uh, one of the more fascinating five, 10 minutes I've spent at the Renaissance Fair, just watching him uh, talk about the temperatures he has to get up, you know, get his little torch up to, to, to form the glass and into That's the cool. melty shapes. And, uh, it's and then he did it yeah. right there in front of us. And he was like taking requests. That was pretty cool. Whoa, that is cool. I mean, there's a lot of really unique craftsman craftsmanship. You wouldn't see like the costumes and the swords, like there's literally blacksmiths there, like folding metal to make swords. There's, there's camel there. We saw camels, donkeys, horses, elephants, and, um, a furry. We saw one furry. Oh, that asshole always furry. shows up, man. He's always this there. Was a lady furry. Oh God. Uh, what, what, yeah. where in Colorado was this? This was down South in Larkspur. Okay. So kind of, a. A little more of a western midpoint between Denver and Colorado Springs. Okay, I just didn't know if it was he like held. Oh, well, you know, typically they have their grounds set up and they just hold it, you know, through the summer season, like every weekend yeah. or whatever. Yeah, they. I will say they had rides. They were all human power rides. So like my kids were on this thing that swung out, you know, like the uh, the swings do. Sure. And but it was all like four dudes running on a like a Conan style wheel on the inside to make it all to happen. I thought that was cool. What was their ethnicity? Uh, actually, there was an African American girl, a Mexican girl, and two white guys. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, I'm weird. guessing. It's like, a, it's like a credit union commercial or something. It was <laughs> or like yeah the. The target is like, uh, a, like, a, for the like a Hulu commercial that's not Chantix. If one of the white guys was in a wheelchair, it would have been the, my my health book from fifth grade. The cover, the cover photo. Yeah. Um, you guys see no sudden move starring Ray Liotta. And no, we're Chantix not doing movies commercial. anymore. No. Oh, oh, OK. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> the Ray Liotta and Chantix go on. I just saw a movie and Ray Liotta was in it. He's not smoking. Did there. he smoke a cigarette? Ray Liotta. No. no one in the movie smoked Ray a cigarette. Liotta. I Guess can't do why. it. It's because of Chantix. Yeah, he got off the smokes. Okay, go ahead and talk about whatever you're going to talk about. <laughs> the, the final what weekend of the Renaissance Fair is the Time Traveler weekend, and I want to go do that sometime. That's when everyone dresses like Star Trek and Marty McFly and Rick and Morty and stuff. So... I would like to try that out because it seems Does like it the most what annoying era, like, could version. You dress like a like Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, because he time traveled for sure. He's also Dick Cheney. I would go Wait, for it, more of like a Looper vibe. Oh, I see. It's got to be somebody who did time travel. I see. <laughs> well, you could bring the if you brought the crew of the first Bill and Ted movie, like Genghis Khan and Joan of Arc and How Socrates. Cool if you. That would be the ultimate group costume right there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Bring a little keyboard or, or put old Beethoven <laughs> over on the uh, the hammer dulcimers. Yep. And he'd be banging away Furelise. I think that was him. No. Do you remember in the mall when they he was doing the uh, keyboard? That's what I mean, yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. yeah. Get, get Napoleon yeah, he, and Elephant He should have been like, not arrested at all. Uh, he just got looped in with it. Uh, yeah. Just a bad crowd. Yeah, Genghis like, Khan was causing Hart the most problems. Been, but yeah, he was knocking heads off ma mannequins. You know what I mean? Come on, guy. Got Kid Cudi with you, Station. Station. Um. So overall, Renaissance Fair, you had a good time. Yep. You went I, to you something. You don't need to do it more than once every couple of you years. You went so. to something similar too recently. You did a little vacation with your fam. Um. Would you say that this was better than that, like pirate um, experience that you guys did? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. It, yep. what, what's the What's the medieval version called? We did the that medieval was featured times. In medieval the pirate yeah. version of medieval times. Yeah, yeah, medieval times, and I always think of Cable Guy um, when Jim Carrey's out there playing the night and like. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, Sorry. Fight, fighting everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah. uh, was was I mean, would you recommend that over a Renaissance fair where you have to walk around and buy a whole lot of? Well, it depends who it is. Going back belts. to Kevin's movie theater analogy, if yeah. you go to a pirate dinner theater, you're expecting some level of like isolation and silence but if you go to the renaissance fair Wait, a pirate dinner you're, theater, no. you're you're cheering for your team and stuff i don't think that it, i don't think that yeah but you're sitting down with your family eating your tater tots either way a turkey leg is going to be involved in either of those situations right i love those things man but i watch some other people eating it <laughs> it made it turned me off so bad yeah just the it was like everywhere i looked like a bad trip or something out of like I don't know. Zombies eating yeah, on really legs like it and just shit. Yeah. Teeth and lips and like, but everyone was just eating this giant turkey leg, this obscenely large turkey leg. Got that dork and meat. Then shit falls off. So when you look at the ground, everywhere you look is cigarette butts and turkey glitter, bits. pieces of flowers, and turkey bits everywhere you go. It's giblets and So my kids were not allowed to touch the ground at all today. Otherwise, it. At public events you're like all right the ground is you can touch it it's we're good to go but at this renaissance fair yes. i want your hands above your hips and don't you even yep. fuck with me on this <laughs> yeah 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 it was like a black talcum powder everywhere there you know go. um so yeah that was my experience yeah we had uh someone in chat say that they enjoyed renaissance fair and or i'm sorry the pirate um the pirate dinner thing. Yeah, they said they would recommend it. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah. You get to kill a sea monster. It's pretty cool. Kraken. Mm mm. It's like there it's its own weird thing. Megalodon. I I can tell you about the uh the make a wish uh, uh the cancer or uh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah so we're just gonna go to medieval times next to Disney World. And I don't know if they knew in advance who was going to win, but my knight uh, did win. Um, so they brought us out all this food, and I was uh, actually pissed off um, because I didn't like the food that they had. Um, none of it had silverware, as they advertise, uh, like you see in Cable Guy. It's not medieval times. It's uh, here you are with uh, no silver, so you have to deal with it. Um, so I didn't like it, um, but they had the night fights. They had like a, a a city outside of the the thing with like torture devices that they would show you. Oh, that's fun! The old Iron Maiden little stretcher machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of weird. They would show that to a kid. Gotta so... run to the hills if they show you that Iron Maiden torture device. Hey, I get nice it. Pool. I get it. I get nice it. Nice pool. For whom the bell tolls. That's probably another song of theirs. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I did a. I did a. I, I've, I've been to Renaissance. I've done a Renaissance fair, and I was bored out of my mind. I hated it. And then the other one was uh, the. Um, what do you what what were we talking about the dinner the knights of the of the round table what medieval is times medieval times thank you uh i did yep. enjoy that i got i got very invested in the, in the green knight section and i don't think we won but i was a green yeah, pirate. The, the green knight green? lost yeah. the black and white was the was the winner when yeah, I, it was a, when i saw say so you got very invested you mean you got very drunk is that um is that how i should hear that I mean, I, I drank, but I wasn't a drinker yet, so I don't know. It was my early 20s, you know what I mean? Well, it's, e so, it's easier to get very drunk when you're not a drinker. This is know? true. And I was with someone lame, so I, like, I feel like I was responsible for providing all the fun in our general area. Um, but also in those things, I just I just buy into it and have a good time. I thought I, I was thinking of the performers. They wanted, you know, they wanted a loud audience. They wanted... They wanted to be cheered on, so I did it. I took, I played my part. So you're saying the Green Knight lost at your thing, and Joe at, at your separate medieval times, the Green Knight also lost. Yeah, the Green Knight was and a big the bad. Yeah. Pirate also lost as well, so Kev. I'm, I'm sensing a 
I'm sensing a fix. A little bit of a trend this here. Yeah. I think it's rigged. Put all the money on the green night losing. Uh, next time you go to one of these. Put all the money on the green night losing. Next time you, yeah, next here. time you go to one of these and, and they ask if you have a preference, just don't choose the green section. And you Kevin's should be... about to be a green night millionaire. He's going to put it all in the, the DraftKings green night medieval times. Thank you, Ramrod. I agree. You have to Can read it for us too. We can't see. We can't see. Oh, sorry. Doing. He just says um, when you're part of a large crowd, it's hard not to get kind of stoked up, and you know that mob mentality of like, "This is real knights. They must. They must battle." You know, every blow is. You know, it's real. Yeah, it matters. Yeah, I love watching knights get blown. It's my favorite part. Kevin. Make what? it make like it about, Jordan Knight. They said make, the word blow and make it was right it about, there. What do you want it, me to do? Make it about sex. Oh, like wow, Brian wow. McKnight. How, how, how. Uh, how, how, how. Joe, what is that? I, I don't know what this is. ZZ Who Top, is man. ZZ Top. ZZ Top. Bum, bum, bum. Oh. Bum, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. Is that one song or many songs that he does this? It's a Lagrange, but it's like Lagrange. one of the most iconic ones. It's pronounced Lagrange. Yeah. How, how, how? You've heard it before. As soon okay. as it comes so on the radio, now, you'll now be like, yeah. yeah, as soon as you as soon as you hear it again, you'll be like, Oh yeah, I love ZZ Top. Um I'm Joe, I'm told they suffered a loss recently. It did, yeah. Yeah. And we're we're still trying to find out. How, how, how? <laughs> Damn it. My dad made it out to the I'm podcast. I'm so mad I at that. It. Yeah, fuck you for that, Joe. No, it, it's sad. It's uh, it's Dusty Hill, the bassist slash uh, lead singer. So ZZ Top, probably no, no more. They're going to be uh, touring. So, yeah. Bummer. That sucks. Bummer. Uh, we love ZZ Top. Uh, I did anyway, but I don't know what you guys thought. But cheap sunglasses. I know a couple songs. I'm not a huge. Oh fan. yeah, that that's a great one. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I bet they enjoyed going to the funeral though, and um, you know, seeing him there, there in the casket wearing that, wearing wearing his suit because uh, everyone's crazy about a sharp dressed man. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Kevin brings it full circle. I, I can I can tell you this much about ZZ Top. Don't get me started. I went and saw them um, uh, uh, more than a more than a few years ago, and um, uh, give me all your loving legs, uh, Tush, Rough Boy. Um, I'm hey. I'm not good at it. I'm not very good at this. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I was just reading off song mm. titles. Can't do that. It's got to oh. form it into a joke. Um. Yeah, I went to I went to Colorado recently. We visited Uncle Joel and brought all the kiddos with me. That was an experience. We we saw the mountains. We saw we saw the trails. We oh, I had a I had a a weed overdose. Do you guys want to talk about that? Yes. So yeah, and I'm also gonna get out of here. Ah, uh, we're so losing a how how how. Do the how. best on your weed overdose, but yes, I have to go to bed. Good night. All right. Good night, Joe. Later, I hope we'll Joe. See you again next week. Is he gone? He's he might already have, gone. He might have just left. Yeah. No response to seeing okay. him next week. Um, no, it's just a. It was just an interesting um, situation. I, I uh, me and me and the super shark. What what we did was we was we back loaded and then we front loaded as well. Uh, so which the backloading has nothing to do with it the edibles were fine but then we smoked this thing called a um like a bubble hash um the willie nelson joint kevin's had the exact same kind of it was yeah, yeah, but are... this had yeah, hash this had the... like hash in it though joel no you're talking about the shatter thing that's one of them special joints that you bought and you were like no it's it's fun and i'm like oh that's too much for me and you're like no it's fine oh the caviar thing yeah, caviar. That's what it's called. Yeah, that just has like a shit. It's like a whole joint of of like uh, weed products. Uh, keef, though, right? Yeah, it's it's ra it's rolled in keef. It's got hash oil on it. Oh it's god, got, it's multiple types of marijuana. Oh. It's, yeah, it's let me a, just say this: starting 15 years ago, um, I didn't need for weed to get stronger. I don't think any um, of us did. Yeah, 
<laughs> it was what I needed it to be 15 years ago. And uh, for some reason, the science of it um, decided to keep advancing as if uh, they were trying to make a more efficient rocket fuel or something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, like the man on the moon. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. it's uh, you're, you're losing sight of, of the product. That's um, it's not what it's for. Um, well, anyway. The light market, like the uh, low THC stuff is super popular right now well, because of that exact same reason. That's not, that's not what I bought. That's not what I bought. I bought, I got, I got myself a bag of edibles and I was stoked for those. Um, great price on those. And then I got this one little tube that had a, a little marijuana. Uh, a, a, it was a jazz cigarette in there. And um, Joel and I sat down on his, uh, his patio. We scarfed an edible and then we smoked this whole thing and we didn't want to finish it. Like him and I were both kind of past it. Like, you know that you ever do that thing with, with like a powerful um, marijuana cigarette where like you hit it and you're like, I don't even want, I don't want anymore, but like, <laughs> we want to finish this thing. And so you're just like passing it to get it away from you, but then they're doing the yep. same thing too. So they hit it and they're like, no, 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 you take it. No, you take it. And you're playing hot potato with this thing until it's gone. And did you so, guys do, did you guys do fake inhales? No, I went, no, I'll give it a little kisses sometimes. Just, yeah, a, just I went, a little one. I went all the way and, and to our benefit, Joel, um, lit it wrong so it was like like the first probably like i don't know half it just, inch it of just it burnt weird it just like it was like burning in the middle and shit and so like we lost like a good chunk of it but not, neither of us were concerned because it was a heavy hitter but uh yeah man Those i think i people were bangers though so, so Those like, first couple was like way more than i expected um so so like i think i like so i don't ever i don't have issues personally um like with my body as far as like anxiety or like panic attacks or anything like that but i'm pretty sure i experienced a panic attack but like one that i knew that i was having it does that make sense have you ever had a panic attack but like as you're going through it or is that like do you have to be like a seasoned veteran to know that like no. like does that no uh, every, every panic attack but the first one uh you probably know that that's what's happening it, and does that bring you some sort of peace while you're experiencing the panic attack? Does it take away from the power of the attack or a little bit mm, yeah. mind over matter kind of situation? Okay. So we were sitting out on his patio and we finished it and we're sitting there and we're talking and everything's fine. And we had a couple cold beers going and I, it, it all started to make sense to me that like I was super uncomfortable and that, this was um i couldn't keep it a secret like that was the first hurdle was like yeah I, I have to let him in on this because there's no way i can fake being cool being with the rest of yeah. the night there's no way that's possible and so i just said like he's you know you're right buddy and i'm like and i'm just like sitting there like just like just angry that's what you did yeah it, it looks like you had like just, ice cream too fast yeah like just angry like just smacking my legs and stuff like yeah no man i'm just I definitely like I'm way I'm way too high. Did like, you have a prevailing thought, John, or was it just you felt shitty? No, I was I was just way too high. Like it was you like have um, a it was like a lot of people be like, I gotta go to work tomorrow and I hate my job, and that's what starts it kind of thing, you know? No, it wasn't. It, um, I, and I have I, plenty of that, by the way. Like I got plenty of that fodder, but I didn't. I didn't. It wasn't happening and it, tapping into any of that. It was just um, uh, just so where super I, high. I got a couple. Couple yeah. questions. Where were your uh, your daughters at the time? Were they they were asleep sleeping? Yeah, in the house. Yep, and we okay, had so and, that... and we had a sober adult inside on call. So like we were good. I mean, as far as um, shenanigans. But that yeah, being it's said, like inside reading a a book. Yeah. Well, John's outside on the deck, like losing my shit. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, it's so it's so strong. It was like staring into the sun is what it was like, but for my mind and weed or whatever, it didn't work out. Um, I came down, it only lasted like, you know, 30, 45 minutes or something. And then I got to a place where I was just, you know, super baked and it was all fine. Um, yeah, you were fine. Once we started playing video games, you were like, "Whoa, that was weird. Wasn't it? <laughs> no, <laughs> well, no, here's what was funny. And so I'm freaking out and, and Joel is Joel. You were great, by the way, you're like very, uh, respectful and and you didn't seem to be in this same position that no, I was I felt like a thousand million dollars yeah and um 
And so I'm talking to, I'm talking my way through it to Joel. And there was like long, like big old pregnant, you know, silent moments of me just kind of like <laughs> breathing <laughs> and re- it, like, again. like it was the, it was the type of thing where like I had to remind myself to breathe because I thought that if I just chilled out and slumped, slumped down in my chair that I might like stop breathing, that kind of thing. But then I was also with it enough to know that he knew I was freaking out and so that I could fuck with him a little bit. And so I looked at him and I was like, dude, I'm pretty sure you got to take me to the emergency room. I'm pretty sure my heart is going to stop tonight. And he gave me a very serious look back. Like I- you looked at me, John, <laughs> it was that pregnant pause. I was like, yeah, dogs are so fun. Look at these dogs. I mean, yeah, running around. And John gives me this like, like crying Indian look at the litter on the highway the and goes, tier. I think you need to take the emergency room. Yeah. But that was based on some other shit that is that that went down that night. And I was and I was joking and I was good. And I knew all I needed was a bunch of water and a big old giant nap. But uh did I you, uh, um <laughs> did you have your you have your watch on? Yeah. Did you check your heart rate in the watch? Didn't think Ooh, to do that's it. That's probably a good way to actually I was snap li- out of like, it. Literally 50% of my cognition was focused on breathing, like deep breaths of, of cool Colorado night air. And just, and, and just that was good. And that and water. And I was just breathing and drinking water. And then, and then I make another decision another couple minutes down the road. And I'm like, I'm sorry, man. Like it's, it's 11 o'clock. Um, and no, it wasn't 11 o'clock, John. It was 8.30. No, no, no. It wasn't that early. No, remember, Joel, because we've been on the phone with Mel and everything else. It was like 11.30, honestly. It was like 11. Okay. And um, It's still early-ish. No, because I remember checking my watch and being like, thinking it was going to say 2 or something like that, 2 in the morning. Um, And... And I'm and I looked at it and, and we had plans to like play video games uh, together. We've been playing like some like couch co-op shit that we just wouldn't normally be able to do um, if we weren't in the same living room and stuff and enjoying our time together. And so I apologized to him, uh, Joel. And I, and I was like, man, I'm sorry, but I, th- I think I'm going to have to lay down, dude. And he, and he's like, that's fine. That's fine. We can go inside. Why don't you lay down? And I was like, no, we can't go inside. Your, your wife's in there. I'm going to have to look at her. I'm going to have to talk to her. Um, my daughters are in there sleeping. What if one of them gets up? And then it hit me. It was like, oh, hey, by the way, you're responsible for the livelihood of my daughters tonight. I can't protect them. You have to protect them. And he's like, Lori's in there. Don't worry about any of that. And so then we go inside and I lay down next to his wife and she's reading her book. It's some John Grisham bullshit. And I'm like, hey, Lori. And she's like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, I'm not doing good. I made a mistake outside with your, with your (laughs) husband and she's, you know, having, having fun with that and laughing. And then Joel disappears for a while. And then he comes back. He's like, Hey man, you want to come downstairs? And then we do. And then the, the, uh, the beta of this new game back for blood, um, was out for the first night and he hands me a controller down in his basement. And I look at that and I'm just like, no, 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 no. And I hand that back to him. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not learning any video games tonight. That's not, that's not happening. And then uh, we had this massive like Costco size bag of chips. It was like some, some ripple, some sort of a, it had like a ruffled kettle chip. Yeah. But it had, what was the flavor? It was something that Salt and pepper. Maybe it was something interesting. It was something different than just like a normal potato, like truffles or something may have been involved. I don't know. It was a, it was a, what, how dare you? Truffles, truffles, gross. It's oh, a gross you're, flavor. Oh, you're wrong. America disagrees. Um, no. And uh, anyways, we're sitting there. It's a cilantro thing, and, I think. And Joel told me later that like every time he, like, because I was just watching him play this game and running the train on these chips because the munchies had kicked in. And uh, we, uh, he said every time <laughs> he, he thought I was like passed out, I would just remove another giant handful of potato chips from the bag and just hush oh my gosh yeah yeah and just and yeah it was i don't know i i say i overdosed and what i mean is that there was the dose desired and then the, that i went over that and i don't know we didn't respect the bu- the bubble the bubble joint that's what it's called the whole thing lasted 25 minutes by the way everyone no i know and john was fine but for me it was and then we played ascension again there were moments of terror. Did I play? 
Yeah, you were like, well, don't ha- don't know what happened to me. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. Like you came back Too in, much. your shirt was yeah. ripped. Maybe you I know? didn't. Maybe I didn't yeah. eat enough what dinner. Happened? Yeah. Well, I think the point is we need more uh, more marijuana products that are low THC. Yeah. Um, you know that are. Uh, we need a just, symbol, just, like just a symbol blend, system. Blend it up with tobacco too, so I can smoke a whole joint and um, not go insane if I'm if I'm the only one smoking. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's more should be That's more economical on the producer's end. You know, you don't have yeah. to give me as much THC, just a little bit, spread it out, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Where's the market? Where's the market for low potency THC? That's what I want to know. They need a symbol. And at one point they had talked about doing like ski runs. So it was like green, blue, double blue, black, double black, and then red, <laughs> which meant like you're out of bounds, bud. Right. Um, I don't well, think we've got do we've that. got we've got numbers though already. They they talk about, you know, percent THC in, in the uh, all the flour they sell. Well, here's a question. How many people realistically do you think look and care and take into consideration ABV in their alcohol? Almost all of them. You really think so? Yeah. I know. I feel like so many people don't even know like why a light beer is a light beer. Yeah. Like for instance, tonight I'm drinking uh Bodhi. Like that's one to kind of be careful. Like if you're going to drink more than a couple, like you're gonna what feel, is that? Seven, eight? You're you're just gonna feel shitty the next morning. Um, Bodhi is an eight point three. Yeah, so it's got some balls on it, you know. Um, but do you think and, a lot of people actually know that? Well, or check or care about that? I, I don't know. Yeah, that. I I th- I think it's a little bit backwards, or maybe not backwards, but not thoughtful necessarily. Like I, I think that people probably. Um, like if if you go out to a bar or whatever, if you see on the menu, they have they have the ABVs there. I think a lot of people are probably uh, tending more towards if, if it's a tie between two beers that they would like to try. I think most people probably tend towards the higher ABV, yeah. um, both because just like, oh, well, it's that'll be more, you know, more fun. Sometimes I, yeah, more fun or this will be a more economical way to spend <laughs> seven dollars. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know that it's calibrated necessarily with how they would want their night and their next morning to go. Right. But, uh, but I, I do think that it's like they're aware when, when they're making choices about what to drink. I, I think ABV is up there. Well, then I, cause I don't, I couldn't tell you what my weed is in terms of its content. I mean, right. sometimes I'll, if I ever buy a joint, I try to get the lowest THC I can Yeah. because I think you should be, I think, one person should be able to smoke like a joint. You want to get and high, you don't want to trip. Complete, you know what I mean? Killer yeah. clown from outer space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, and I mean, to be fair, I mean, this thing had hash in it. You know what I mean? And hash is just condensed, the, is the way I understand you know. it. It's like super condensed yeah. um, weed. So it's like, of course, this is going to be more powerful than a standard J. But I went into that experience thinking, like, I have a pretty good understanding of uh, what this um you know does to does does to me and does to my body and my metabolism and all that and then i was just wrong 10 minutes after you know finishing it and i was like oh my god we have a situation here um but it all worked out i, I think those are good, good for us though i think we should all kind of experience that like twice a year oh sure and and we've talked about um psychotropics and you know hallucinogenics and stuff in in the past on this podcast and i am i am I'm I'm like okay with finding um the boundaries and like that was one of the that was definitely the the highest I think I've ever been off of just THC and that was like um okay good to know that you, that's John, good, you no, were high no it was off like just that um joint and then downstairs then the was, edibles kicked while, in then the yeah. edibles kicked in but they kind of smoothed everything yeah, out yeah. I felt like no and and recently I'm much more, and I've spoken about this before, but like, I, and I, I, I champion the edibles. I, I like, I think that's more, way more my groove than, Yeah. I mean, we could, you could get me a whole, you know, um, like rolled, uh, product that's just middle of the, the, you know, middle of the scale, you know, weed or whatever. And that would still, uh, mess me up like pretty good, but I thought what I was doing that night, um, I thought uh, I had a good understanding of what would 
what would happen, I guess. And I, and I was wrong. And so it surprised me. And I was like, well, you know, Bruce, we fall down. So we learn how to pick ourselves back up again. That's right. That's right. I didn't think I was going to die, but I was just like, this is unpleasant. This sucks. I'm, this is too, this is more. I usually take a walk if I feel that way, which is rare. It'd be like if you ordered, um, you, you, you went to your, your local ice cream shop and you said, give me one dip of chocolate chip. And they gave you, 20 dips and you had to eat it all or something like that and it was just like god i don't this is my stomach hurts and i have the diarrhea and i'm I'll sweating I'll now an and <laughs> i go into the kitchen i worked at a place called keystone science school and i went into the kitchen this was before a big like big meeting sort of situation and one of the kitchen helpers his name was kyle goes um hey there's iced coffee in the fridge it's like oh awesome thanks man and i poured myself iced coffee i go to this meeting I'm drinking it, and like all of a sudden, I'm like, like I felt tight around my neck, and like my pulse is going through the roof, and I'm sweating everywhere. And I finished the meeting, and I'm like shouting. I finished the meeting, and um, Kyle's like, hey, "What'd you think of that coffee?" And I was like, "It's fucking intense, man." He goes, "Yeah, I put like 18 of those extra shots from 7-Eleven in there." Oh shit! Like, why the fuck wouldn't you tell me that? Yeah. That was my example of like, you know what coffee's gonna feel like, and when it's like suddenly you're like, like you're like, I almost fight a per, I almost like fought a person in the parking lot. Like, you gotta let energy. me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much. Um. So yeah, but other than that, the Colorado trip was a joy. We were out there for like a week and a half. We did. I don't know. Saw we some nature. The air. We couldn't breathe the air. Oh yeah, that, that was weird. the other thing. the The air quality was fucked for the last couple of days while we were out there due to the, some of the fires out west, and it was uh, it was really weird. You'd be out midday and you look at the sun, and it was like like Mad Max hazy. Yeah, everything yeah. was hazy, and but not like cloud coverage hazy. Like ugh, it was weird. Did you actually have to like be inside or um we for did a couple we, days. Yeah, we made an effort to keep the kids inside. Um uh yeah, just to it mean, was and eight, we and we had I mean, plans to you. go to parks and do more hiking and stuff like that. And it was like, no, nah, we should keep them all inside. They have little 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 pink lungs. Yeah. At one point, Kev, it was eight times over what was considered bad. And f- for one day, Denver had the worst air quality in the entire world. It beat out Beijing for the worst air air quality for- in the entire world. Damn, it was pretty USA, nasty. USA, USA, <laughs> hang up your flags. Full um, mast. Full mast. Yeah, it was a really fun trip. We miss you guys dearly, and I both saw both of you on Colorado recently. So feel like I got my fill. But we should still do a fall get together, if you know what I mean. A gut together? A gut together. A gut together. Yeah. I uh, haven't messed with that stuff since my last experience, so I am uh, since you tempted went to the to, stars. Yeah, I am tempted to uh, dip a toe back in. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's been a pod. Uh, the only other thing I had on this list was that my wife put her cat to sleep, but who wants to talk about that? You know what I mean? Let's move it. Let's let's move on into the future. Um Thanks everybody I think, for I think I think we should talk about that next time we have Joe because I, I feel like you'll have some some interesting yeah. Yeah. thoughts on euthanasia. Yeah, I think that's I think that's next fair. time I see you guys I will have a new automobile. So I'll be Yeah, we about yeah, that. we were gonna talk about new cars, that My too. My first electric vehicle, all electric. Um but yeah, hopefully hopefully you get an an episode next week. We've been like I said, we've been real spotty uh recently, but um sundays um i think is is still the day so kevin tell me if i'm wrong but you know it is we gotta i mean it all revolves around your your dinner times we gotta figure that out we gotta get back in there um but yeah thanks folks for checking back in thanks to the uh thanks you who is this we got uh, uh me ramrod and uh captain awesome thank you guys for hanging out in our uh, Twitch stream this week, and then if you enjoy the episode uh, and and you're happy to see it pop up on your on your feed and you know whatever uh, uh, podcast app you're using, we uh, you know we're ha- we're happy uh, happy to goof around with you, and we hope you enjoyed it. If if not, unsubscribe. If so, tell a friend. Uh, 
click the like button and the subscribe button, uh, hit the bell, what, you know, all that, all the, all the things, um, Joel, thanks for jumping in this week. I know it's hard with your schedule to find a couple hours to talk about Batman and weed and all those things (laughs) that we talk about. And, uh, (laughs) it's important. Kevin, nice surprise you jumping in. Um, everyone listeners, let's cross our fingers. Let's say a prayer. Let's get Carl back next week. Come on. Let's get Carl on this episode. Come oh, on. Hey, Kev. You know what you could do, John, is just start a podcast and call him and and just start talking with him. Carl doesn't but pick don't up tell his him. phone. No, he's got a pick. He still has the option to pick up his phone or not. Kevin's chest hair is magnificent. Yeah. Um, this is what? Episode 191. Stay safe out there. Leave no trace. Wave to your your friends fucking get your vaccination done please do that and then and then wear masks now like i don't know where you are in the country if you're hearing this but shit's getting real again i'm not thrilled about this um wave to your neighbor what are the other things we say i think that's it that's most of it yeah be nice yeah try to be try to be kind try to be uh patient to people uh, talk to people in men's restrooms yeah Make a loud joke. Keep your mouth shut at the movie theater. Keep your mouth shut Keep at the movie theater. Mouth shut at the movie theater. As soon as you start to think about something to say, just shut the fuck up at the movie theater. And play all the Halo campaigns before yes. November fifteenth. That's right. Um, drink, drink more water. Eat less sugar. Take a bike ride. Take a take a walk. Take a run. Yeah. yeah. Be accountable, guys. That's that's what I think. Be accountable. To yourself, yeah. to your family, to your friends, to your loved ones. Be accountable. I dare you. Fully accountable. It's hard. All right. I'm accountable. I always stand at least, uh, you know, there's always some daylight between me and the next thing. So that if you're trying to count all the things in the room, I'm, I'm one distinct entity. You son of and a I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm accountable. You're, you son uh, of a I bitch. I get it. I get it. All right. Uh, PCRN 191. Uh, we'll see you guys in hell. Podcast. Podcast right now. Right now. <laughs> it's a podcast. Happy birthday, Kevin. Yeah, oh, happy birthday, Kevin. You. We didn't even talk thank about you. that on thank the you. podcast. Yeah, that's right. I guess, uh, you know, halfway I guess. To, well, not halfway. You're almost 40. How's that feel? It's fine, I guess. Were well, you know. 36 now? Five. 35 oh yeah. you're good you're good yeah um you know it's uh it's whatever i feel um i feel the same whatever i'll, yeah. I'll be 40 soon and and that'll be a thing um i mean i'm not i'm a man so i'm not really limited by any ages between 30 and 50 uh you know Got to figure out uh, whether we're going to have kids, but that's all a function of how old she is. So. True story. Right. And if she's yep. too old, you can get another one. It's true. No, yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I got a couple of years on you. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm still like kind of like 24 or something. I don't know. Well, like as far as how I feel, you know what I mean? Like I'm I can still do a fucking somersault and a cartwheel and I can dunk on you in basketball. So like I still feel good. Well, you know? well yeah, we uh you know physically so I've, I've had I've I've had the watch for like a year, right? So I, I feel pretty good. I feel better turning thirty five than I did turning thirty four. There you go. And uh but it, it makes me curious, you know, what kind of shape we could have been in in our twenties if we had given a shit. Oh my God. I have thought about yeah. that too. Yeah. Cause this is a new thing for me giving a shit. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, whatever. Cap- yeah. Captain awesome in chat is wondering if we know that we're still live. Yes, we do. We always do a little bonus in the beginning, a little bonus in the end. We don't make mistakes over here at the PCRN studio. Come on. Come on. What's up? Older John. 30 37 now eight seven yeah okay. jordan jordan just turned 36 so yeah joel's 43 is that right joel no way that's old. i'm not how old are You're you 40 40 flat it's a flat 40 that's not bad once you're 40 though if you get cancer like no one's 
that surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. I'll, I'll read stories and it'll be like, 37-year-old man died doing something stupid. And it's like, pretty good run. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got corona while scuba diving. Yeah. No. No, no, here's the weirdest thing. It's just if you ever talk to anyone who's, you know, 22, it's like a whole, it's just. They're, they're babies. They're kids. They're babies. Yeah, they're they little are, kids. Yeah. yeah. And, they're and, babies. Even, and that's even the age most... I relate to. So then when I try to be like, what's up, man? And they're just like, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, you're old. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And they're like, yeah, you are. And I'm like, oh, I am. <laughs> Even most uh, most women or girls or whatever at uh, like 20, 21, like they, they don't look uh, like some of them are, are hot or whatever. They're like as hot as a woman will ever be. Yeah. But, uh, up, you know, I, I'd say that's probably less than half of them. And the rest of them look like kids. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, it's weird. They're young. They're too young. Too young. Big um, eyes, big Disney eyes. You know, they. it's like, oh, wow, there's not a single wrinkle on your face. Have you not laughed a lot? It's like, no, I just have a new face. Yeah, I laugh and then it goes back to normal. Yeah. It goes back. Smooth. After um, that. Yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, John, what's your what's your Sunday dinner schedule? I feel like that's the the moving piece. We have to kind of figure our time around. Yeah, we. I mean, we do it every week. It's really the bedtime schedule, which is um, at I think, at the latest nine. You know, so I think we have to. Well, we have to figure out when the dinners start and or end. Yeah, and then uh, Maggie just has to be the one that puts them to bed on Sundays. Oh man, yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough one, man. Every every week I do the podcast, it's like the first episode we've ever done to her like she's never adapted to the schedule. well that's why you gotta be consistent and let her see it coming don't you get sundays off of family time when football season starts i'm not a sporter so that i'm screwed there it's, that's yeah. all the more reason you should get it off for the podcast though yeah why because because every other man is supposed to get it off for football mm -hmm. i she didn't get the memo man i mean she, she beat of her own drum i don't know Just buy a football and start throwing it with one of your daughters and okay it's your good thing. okay yeah mm -hmm. get one jersey but then if i don't watch football and put the daughter to you bed and your team <laughs> i don't know it's uh, yeah i don't know it's tough and, and we only have nine episodes left before the whole the whole thing is over and then we're then we're good that's right. nine weeks so i have to see <laughs> That's true. No, I don't know. For real though, that's what we. That's is what it we me? need because we, yeah, because we had we had a regular you know Sunday evening time, and then it kind of coincided with when the dinners became. Happening. Um, okay, so we like which, which um, is fine, but we just need to figure out when they happen, and if it's the same time, then that's cool, so and we can go before yeah, but, or after. And but what's you, what's the start time? Okay. Eight is that what we need? What'd you say, Sorry. Tyler? Yeah. Well, they just grill during the day and then they eat it at nighttime. Ooh, that's a really good idea. Pre make dinner. And then in exchange for pre making dinner, Maggie puts the, the girls down. But the, but the dinner is interacting with the uh, the in laws, right? It's a it's a thing we started. Yeah, it's right, Sunday. Right, it's right. Maggie's oh, parents. Well, then do uh, Saturday dinner or like a. No, no, no. They they can have their Sunday dinners. We just have to you know, know when it's done. Seven o'clock. Yeah, we just have to figure out what the yeah, schedule yeah. is. I got you. We'll talk. This is we'll talk. <laughs> um, John, are you gonna play Halo tonight? <sighs> Fuck yeah! I have to pee really bad right now, but I'm gonna do it. Let's yeah, uh, let's. Playing, I'm gonna uh, end the line the live stream. Halo um, campaigns. I'm gonna end the live stream on Twitch. So, um, for real, uh, Ramrod and and awesome. Thanks for hanging out appreciate you guys you made you were you were adding things to the podcast we appreciate that